gosh, isn't Pokemon just great? With the newest games, Scarlet and Violet, right around the corner, it's got me thinking about this franchise and looking back on all the fond memories it's given me over the years. It's a game full of whimsy and magic, with all its quirky creatures and sprawling worlds just begging for you to get lost in them. Now, I bet none of you have ever stopped to wonder just how exactly it all works. I think we all sort of assume that Pokemon games are conjured by a wizard atop a gilded tower or something, but maybe we just peel back the curtain a bit. Oh my god, it's all just math! Yep, sorry to dunk on your childhood, but that epic battle you had against Cynthia was just two equations subtracting from each other. This equation, in fact. Puts the quadratic formula to shame, doesn't it? Now, for some of you, this might be an earth-shattering revelation that has irrevocably buried the sweet innocence of youth in a 10-foot grave, but not for me. You see, I'm one of those weird people that actually kind of likes math, a monster I know. But where others see a disappointment, I see an opportunity. I know everyone who's anyone who's even thought about making Pokemon-related content on YouTube has at one point made a top 10 best Pokemon video where they outline which Pokemon they like the best. Now, that's all well and good, but that's not what best means. Sure, you can like whatever Pokemon you want for any number of reasons besides strength and battle. Any Pokemon can be your favorite, but they're not the best. Today, I'm going to set out to prove which Pokemon is inarguably the best. It's Eternatus. It's got the highest base stat total of any Pokemon in the game, followed by the two Mega Mewtwo's and Mega Rayquaza. That's what you're thinking, right? Oh, 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 my sweet innocent pupil, if only it were that easy. If you take a gander over at that damage formula I showed you earlier, you'll see that there's, uh, ba -ba, let's see, let's see, carry the one. About a million different factors that determines a Pokemon's strength. But how could one possibly analyze and compare such varied criteria measured on wildly different ranges? I'm glad you asked. You see, by day, I work as an engineer. And as part of the job of an engineer, you have to look at a bunch of different designs and compare them to determine which one is the best to pursue. To do that, we use something called the design, the design matrix. matrix. The idea is that you come up with a bunch of different numeric criteria that you can use to rank each design. You know, like weight, size, lifetime, cost, all that good stuff. Then, you standardize all those values to make them easier to compare, add them all up, and whichever design has the highest score is the winner. Today, we're going to use a similar principle, but with Pokemon, so it's fun! Fair warning, this video is going to have a fair bit of math in it, but, but wait, 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 don't leave, don't leave just yet. I promise it's going to be mostly goose and gaffs and bits with the math just sprinkled in. The hope is that you'll be sitting there chuckling yourself, ha ha, that is a funny pop culture reference. Oh. Wait a second, I don't know how to make data-driven decisions. It's a win-win for everybody. So in order to start this data analysis, well, first we gotta get some data to analyze. I googled Pokemon stats spreadsheet, and oh my god, something actually came up. Apparently, some absolute legend named Runic Bannock, hope I'm pronouncing that right, did most of the legwork for me and made a spreadsheet with all sorts of info ripped straight from Cerebi. Is it accurate? I hope so! Oh yeah, also this sheet is a little outdated and only includes Pokemon up through Generation 7, so I should probably go in and add all the new Galar Pokemon myself. I am an engineer after all, it's only fair in the name of absolute accuracy. But while that may be true, I was, up until very recently, an engineering student. So. We're going to do what we can to ensure maximum accuracy while putting in the bare minimum effort. If Twitter's to be believed, eh, everyone hated Galar anyway, and I beat the whole game with a squirrel that one time, so how strong could any of them really be? Now that we have our data, it's time to decide on some criteria. We're going to start off with something simple, base stats. Most of you probably know this, but for those who don't, Pokemon have six stats that determine what they're good at and what they suck at. Add them all up, you've got a base stat total. Now, I know I said earlier that base stats alone don't determine how strong a Pokemon is, but they at least play a part. So here, we've got a list of all the base stats for every single Pokemon, 
ranging from Mega Rayquaza at the top with a base stat total of 780 and Sun Kern at the bottom with a total of 180. I'm not super used to working in magnitudes of 600, so let's make this a bit simpler and make everything on a scale of 1 to 10, shall we? We're going to be doing this a lot during this video, but there's a simple trick to make it easy. Check this out. If you look at the highest numbered value in the column, move the decimal place over one place, and then divide everything in the column by that new number, boom! The highest value is 10, and everything goes down from there to zero. While we're here, I'm going to do the same thing with base happiness, just because it's easy. But it's not always about how many stats you have, it's how you use them. Take this as an example. Fion and Salazzle both have a base stat total of 480. Fion has its stats spread completely evenly, 70 across the board, meaning that it's fine, but not great at anything. I would say it's a jack of all trades, but eh, let's be honest, it's more like a six of all trades. And then you have Salazzle. Sure, its defenses are a lot lower than Fion's, but that means it was able to pump those extra stats into its special attack and speed, meaning that it can usually knock someone's lights out before they get a chance to hit it anyway. What I'm saying is that in Pokemon, it's usually better to specialize in a few things and dump the things that you'd never use anyway. That's why I've decided to exclusively work out my elbows and nothing else. You'll see. You'll see. Someday it's going to come in super clutch. Someday. It hasn't yet. But how do we account for this in our spreadsheet? Well, this is going to get a bit more complicated than last time, but stick with me. It'll make sense. What we want to do is find out how many of a Pokemon's stats are significantly higher than the others? To do that, we're gonna find the deviation. There's a few different ways we could do this, but remember, I'm lazy, so we're gonna do it the easy way. First, we'll take each Pokemon's base stat total and divide it by six. This is what each stat would be if it was distributed evenly like Fionn's was. Then, we're gonna take each of its base stats and subtract this number from it. Any number that's higher than the average will be positive, and any number that's lower will be negative. But remember, if you have low stats, it's fine if you're never going to use them anyway, so we'll set everything less than zero to be equal to zero instead. Lastly, we'll standardize each one of these out of 10. Sounds like a lot of math to do for all 800 Pokemon on this list, but uh, it's a spreadsheet, so it just does it all for me. This is engineering, baby. Next up is abilities. This one's a bit more tricky since it's not a numerical value and it has to be for our decision matrix to work. So here's what I decided to do. I looked up strongest Pokemon abilities and found this article from The Gamer. I don't know much about competitive Pokemon and which abilities are considered to be good or not, but I mean, come on. They're called The Gamer for crying out loud. <laughs> I think they would know. I went through the sheet and any Pokemon that had one of these abilities got a point. The only ones that had access to more than one of these abilities was the Luxray line, which has Intimidate and Guts, so they got two points. To standardize it, the Luxray line gets a 10, everyone with just one of these abilities gets a 5, and everyone else gets a 0. Also, as a note, in the case where a Pokemon has multiple forms with different abilities, I only took into account the ability for the form which was stronger. So, for example, Heracross has Guts in its regular form, which is considered to be one of the best abilities, but it loses that when it mega evolves, which the spreadsheet uses the stats for, so it doesn't get the point. Anyone who's played Pokemon for long enough will know that it's basically just the world's most complicated game of rock, paper, scissors, so of course I had to take types into account. Thankfully, this sheet contains a handy dandy section where it outlines every Pokemon's weaknesses and resistances, so I just had to add all those up and I got a resistance score for everyone. There's only one problem with this though. The sheet denotes a 2 as a 2 times weakness, a 0.5 as a 2 times resistance, and a 0 as an immunity. So that means when I add all these up, a Pokemon with more resistances will have a lower score instead of a higher one, which is the opposite of how all our other scales worked. This is a very serious problem and has a very, very complicated solution, so stick with me. And then you uh, you just you standardize it like all the others. 
Stats and abilities are all well and good, but it doesn't matter if your moves are hot garbage. Does anyone who's tried to use a Pissimian like I did before would know? Yikes. This one was a bit trickier to figure out since there isn't any information included on this in the spreadsheet that I got, but here's what I ultimately settled on. We're going to use a similar point system like I used with the abilities, but it's a little more involved this time. A Pokemon gets a point for every move they have of a unique type above 80 base power, because let's be honest, if you're rolling up to a serious battle with Tackle, you've already lost. They also get a point for any useful status move they have, so like no splash or anything. And a point for every move under a base 80 power that has a good secondary effect like knockoff or something. All right, Whew. time to start tallying all this up. Nope, this is taking way too long. Time to justify leaving it out. To quote the great Rocky Balboa, it ain't about how hard you can hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Now that's coming from Rocky, the guy who uh, ran up those stairs. Look, I haven't seen any of these movies. This is Rocky, right? All right, now that we've got all of our standardized scores figured out, we can just add all those up and we'll have our final score, right? Whoa, 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 hold your rapid ash there, buddy. We've still got one last step to go. You see, we've got all these criteria but not all criteria are created equally. Like, let's be honest, a Pokemon's base happiness isn't as important as its base stat total. Boy, that sounds just terrible when I say it out loud. What we need to do is weight everything in terms of how important they are. Now, normally there's a whole big process you gotta go through for this where you like talk to the different stakeholders and you have them rank the stuff and it's all a whole big process, but remember, I'm lazy, so I'm gonna just eyeball it. All these weights are percentages, so they should add up to 100% in the end. I put base stat total at the highest at 30%, next is resistances at 25, abilities is 10. Honestly, I probably should have put it a bit higher, but the way I rank them is kind of jank and I didn't want to mess up my data too much, so we'll leave it at 10% for now. And everything else, I just put at 5%. I didn't want to rank any one stat higher than the others because well, let's be honest, any stat can be good under its own circumstances, and happiness is not super important. Am I the bad guy here? Now we just multiply each score with its respective weight, and we put all that data into its own matrix off to the side, and there it is. The fabled decision matrix in all its glory. I know it's a little hard to keep track of what we we're doing across all these different columns and whatnot, but for those of you who are curious, this is everything we just did put into a single formula. Pretty wild, right? I think I'll call it the Pokemon equation. Now, in just a few short moments, I can add up each row and every single Pokemon will be ranked out of 10 possible points. And we can finally know once and for all, which Pokemon are the absolute best and which ones have Mr. Darwin knocking at their door. Hey everyone, I'm here in a different shirt because it is one week later and I need to talk to you about a little something called checking your work. You see, while editing this video, I've realized that I made a mistake in the first iteration of my spreadsheet, a mistake that seemed small at first, but ended up changing basically the entire order of my top 10. So, you know, that was fun. I won't get into it too much, but basically I realized that my spreadsheet didn't account for resistances and immunities that arose because of abilities like levitate and stuff like that. And so this was in the first iteration of the spreadsheet. I went in and added all those manually. And I thought, great, I've covered all my bases. Except there was one Pokemon that I missed that I will get into later. And that one little mistake ended up changing everything. So check your work or else you'll have to come back like a week later and re-record the entire second half of the video or I'll just reorder it and put in a voiceover because I'm lazy. Probably that second option. All right, now back to the video. I probably could have just had the, my, like pan my thing down in post, but no, I've decided to squat this is a mistake. But before I do, I thought we could play a little game. 
I'm going to ask you some trivia questions based on the, what I've learned from this data, and you can put your guesses in the comments. Let me know how many you got right, and I can statistically rank all of you in the next video. All right, question one. What is the best possible type combination in terms of resistances? The answer? Steel and fairy. And question two, what's the worst? Ice and rock. I'm looking at you, Amora, you my little pony looking freak. A strong breeze will take this thing out. Question three, which Pokemon has the most extreme stat when compared to its base stat total? In other words, which Pokemon is the best there is at what they do and really just nothing else? The answer is Chansey, whose HP stat is a whopping 175 points above its average. Fun fact, Blissey is actually second. While its HP is slightly higher than Chansey's in total, all of its other stats have increased by more, so the deviation is lower. Question number four. Who is, statistically speaking, the most average Pokemon? I'm talking about your quintessential five out of 10. I'm talking if you channeled the essence of the word fine into a Pokemon, which one would you get? The answer is Snubble. Yeah, yeah, this one changed. <sighs> Question five. It's pretty well known among hardcore Pokemon fans at this point that Sunkern is the weakest Pokemon in terms of base stats. Well, I guess you could say the small wishy-washy form is, but it's got its whole like transformation thing, so it's kind of different. And that hasn't changed with my more sophisticated ranking system. Sunkern is still at the bottom of the barrel, but if you ranked every Pokemon from weakest to strongest in terms of base stat total, and then again in terms of their Pokemon score, I guess we're calling it, who would be the first one to be different? In other words, which Pokemon is way worse than their base stats would suggest? The answer is Bounceweet, who in terms of base stat total is 16th from the bottom. But when you take everything else into account, it jumps to second from the bottom. Whew. What a fall from grace. Well, is 16 grace? All right, that's a few fun facts for me, but I've kept you waiting for long enough. It's time to prove all those listicles wrong and determine once and for all who makes the top 10 best Pokemon. Number 10, Mega Lucario. Yeah, yeah, I know, stereotypical popular kid coming in to start off the top 10. But what can I say? The numbers don't lie. And neither does that attack stat, am I right? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. But yeah, I don't have a whole lot of interesting stuff to say about this one. It's got very good stat spread, it's steel typing gives it some good resistances, and it's a mega evolution. And as you'll soon see, there's a reason why Nintendo took these out of Gen 8. Because they quite literally broke the game. Number 9, Mega Gyarados. This thing is here for a few simple reasons. Let me read you a quick list here. Zygarde, Landorus, Shaman, Darkrai, Deoxys, Celebi, Mew. These are all Pokemon whose base stat total is 30 points behind a fish that you gave a bunch of candy and a rock. Being a Mega, it also has access to two great abilities. As a regular Gyarados, it gets Intimidate which lowers its opponent's attack at the start of a battle, before it Mega Evolves. A very good ability to be sure, maybe one of the best, but once you get that initial attack drop off, it doesn't really do you anything else. That is, unless you turn into a giant shrimp, which, yes, admittedly, a lot less intimidating. But also, it doesn't care about your silly little ability one bit as it eats you in one gulp. Look, all I'm saying, one million bucks for that Magikarps is suddenly sounding pretty good now, isn't it? Number eight, Celesteela. Not gonna lie, I forgot this thing existed. Like, seriously, at this point in my life, there are very few Pokemon that I haven't used at least once, just like for a few minutes. But Celesteela is definitely on that list. Also, I could have sworn that this thing was a grass type. I mean, just look at its level up moveset, but nope, apparently it's still flying. Can't you tell? Based on all those flying moves it has? Man, Ultra Breeze are weird, but I guess that was kind of the point. But aside from that, if you're looking for a good defensive Pokemon, those high defenses and real good resistances make Celesteela one of your best possible options. Number seven, 
Cartana. Cartana is the perfect example of picking one specific thing and being the best there is, was, and ever will be at that one thing. In the case of Cartana, that thing is giving you a paper cut so bad your grandchildren will be wincing every time they wash their hands. I know you know the feeling. It sucks. I mean, good lord, just look at that weighted attack stat. It's got enough speed to hit most things before they can say, hang on, is that a, is that a sentient paper airplane? And its ability Beast Boost can raise its attack each time it kills something, which honestly feels a little unfair at this point. And you know what? Its resistance score is actually one of the best in the game. It's a shame that its defenses are way too low for that to be any sort of help at all, though. I mean, he's just... He's a paper airplane. It makes sense. Number six. Shuck. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe this, this system ain't hundred percent accurate after all. I guess it's got decent resistances, but the main reason Shuck list here is because of its absolutely insane defense and special defense stats when compared to the rest of its stuff. Is that helpful in any situation? I have no idea. Oh yeah, it also has got the ability Sturdy, which is one of those good abilities that got a point. But I mean, let's be honest, you're not getting through all those defenses in one go anyway. Number five, Luxray. Look, I'm gonna be honest, Luxray is basically only here because of the extremely biased way I encounter for abilities. I mean, but then again, there's something to be said for having access to a fantastic offensive ability in Guts, turning any status condition into a huge attack boost and intimidate arguably the best ability in the game, capable of making any physical attacker crap themselves the moment Luxor hits the field. And looking at it, yeah, fair enough. Number five, Mega Agron. A <laughs> special screw you to Mega Agron for being the one to make me mess up my spreadsheet because I accidentally gave it one more resistance than it had because it changes types and it's got the ability filter which messes with its resistances a whole bunch. I accidentally gave it the highest resistance in the game. That is not true. It is like fourth from the highest. But you might remember that because of the way we standardize everything, if the highest score in a category changes, then everything in that category changes. And if everything in one category changes, all the scores change and it messes with everything and I can't get... Oh, I hate it. Mm. <laughs> anyway, Mega Aggron is still at number five. It's still got very, very good resistances, not the best, and its attack and defense are stupidly high. It's literally the best defensive Pokemon in the game. You want some advice on how to take out Mega Aggron? Well, it's pretty simple actually. You don't. Or, you know, you could just use literally any special attack. Like, it's got high defenses, sure. One flamethrower, this thing's still going down. Actually, now that you mention it. Number three, Mega Mawile. At a glance, Mega Mawile doesn't seem too impressive. I mean, sure, Steel Fairy is the best defensive typing in the game, as we said, and its stats are Pretty good, but top three. Really? Well, it's here that I should confess there's something I left out when talking about abilities before. There are a couple of abilities, namely Huge Power, Pure Power, and Fur Coat that flat out doubles a Pokemon's base stat. In Mawile's case, Huge Power takes his ordinary 105 attack up to a ludicrous 210. The spreadsheet just shows it as a base 105, but Mega Mawile only has access to huge power, so there's literally no situation where Mawile isn't rocking a base 210 attack. So I decided to manually adjust its base stats accordingly instead of just giving it a straight point for its ability. So looking at the stats now, ah, yes, yes, okay, now that makes sense. Oh, and when you look at that, it's got great defensive too. Great, just kill me. That's not a request. That's just a simple statement of what would happen if you ever came face to face with one of these things. Number two, Aegislash. Anyone who's used an Aegislash or had one used against them probably isn't very surprised by this. First of all, Ghost and Steel has some of the most immunities in the game, which is a big plus right there. Second, take a gander at those base stats. Hooey mama. But more importantly, 
Aegislash somehow managed to specialize in a few specific stats, but at the same time specialize in all of the stats. Get it? Me neither, because Stance Change's ability is straight up busted. Whenever you attack, you're hitting with an insane base of 140 on either side. Want to be able to take a hit? No worries, just slap on that king shield, swap those attacks and defense stats, and eat those attacks like they're Honey Nut Cheerios. Oh, and if you get hit by a physical attack while you're protected, their attack goes down the stage just to kick them in the nuts. And there's no limit to the number of times you can do this. You can just switch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, as much as you want. The crazy thing is, this sheet doesn't even account for the fact that it has all this built-in versatility besides just a plus one for its ability, and yet it still managed to get the number three spot based on its regular stats alone. <laughs> Who said I didn't include Pokemon Sword and Shield, am I right? Because it's, it's, it's a sword with a shield? At number one, the moment you've all been waiting for, statistically, the best Pokemon in the game. Got any guesses? Well, here it comes. Primal Kyogre. Yep, you heard me right. Kyogre. Like, on one hand, this isn't that surprising. It's got insane base stats, some of the highest in the game. But on the other hand, why Kyogre specifically? Where's Groudon? Where's Mega Rayquaza? Is it because, for some reason, the list I used counted Drizzle as one of the good abilities, but not Drought? No, I thought so too, but no, actually. Even if you completely remove abilities from the equation, Kyogre still reigns supreme. I guess it's thanks to its slightly better ability spread and much better resistances being a water type. Honestly, I really couldn't tell you. And also, this doesn't actually come into play at all, but like, Water is strong against ground, you know, I'm just saying, just saying. Maybe Team Aqua knew what they were doing. I was always more of a Ruby boy as a kid, you know, I was just a bigger fan of Groudon's design, I guess, but it looks like I Kai oh grr you an apology. Oh, that was terrible. Is that how we're ending it? Really? Yep, I got nothing else. That's how we're ending it. Hey everyone, thanks so much for sticking around to the end of the video. If you like this video, consider subscribing. I do scripted and edited gaming videos like this once a month, and a bunch of fun challenge videos in the weeks in between. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Did you like the new format? If you have something else you'd want to see me rank in a similar fashion to this in the future, let me know! I'm totally down to like, I don't know, make this a running series or something if people are into it. But, alas, I'll have to leave you here, but you can click on one of the videos floating around the screen if you'd like to continue your binge session. Hey, believe me, I get it. Alright, take it easy.